Hey dreamers, welcome to today's Steamwork Design and Build Challenge. Hello everyone. I'm gonna call it Little B. I'm Barbara from National Children's Museum and today we're making puppets. I've been thinking a lot about how my emotions affect my thoughts and my behavior. Sometimes I feel sad or frustrated. When that happens, it can be hard to think about things that make me happy or try and do nice things for other people. It's okay to have those feelings, but it's also important to learn about how those feelings impact the way we think or what we do. I've also been thinking about how we are all in this together. Sometimes I feel lonely, but then I remember that even if I can't see my friends, we're all doing the same thing, trying to be healthy and staying safe. And that makes me feel much better. To have some fun and help me think about my body, my thoughts, and my feelings, I'm going to make a puppet. There are lots of different ways to make a puppet. Hand puppets cover your hand, maybe with an old sock or a paper bag. And finger puppets, you can try maybe cutting a glove, get those fingers on. Then there's shadow puppets and stick puppets, and then there's marionette puppets. That's what we're gonna try and do today. So. Say hello to my little puppet. I'm gonna call it Little B. So join me in making a puppet. A marionette puppet is a puppet that can move. It has joints and it's gonna use strings so that we can manipulate it as our puppet master. So we need to be able to make different body parts. There are different ways that you can do it. So I encourage you to be super creative and make your own design if you want to. You can see with my example that I have five different body parts. I have two arms that move with the shoulder joint and I have two legs that move at the hip. And then I have a connected head and torso. So these are my five body parts and I made mine out of cardboard. I encourage you to try using thin cardboard. It's easier to cut out and manipulate especially because we're gonna be having to create holes in the cardboard for the joints where they're connected. You can get a thin piece of cardboard like a cereal box and cut it up. Or if you wanna try and use cardstock, if you have that at home, that's another great material too. I think the first thing is to sketch out your body parts, to draw them and see if you like the shape of them, the size of them. Remember that we're gonna be making holes, so it, you don't want anything to be too skinny, too small. Okay, because if you make a hole and then your hand falls off, that would be terrible. So I'm gonna draw a new puppet so we can do it together. I'm gonna need to make my cardboard flat. So first thing I'm gonna do that. Okay, one flat piece of cardboard. I'm gonna put my scissors down so they're nice and safe. I'm gonna start drawing my body parts. Drawing a circle for my head, a little bit of a neck, shoulders. I'm gonna draw two arms. And again, because I want to have a hole for the hand that's gonna lift and lower the arm, I'm gonna make sure my hand is pretty big. If you want to make sure that your limbs are symmetrical, that means that they're the same on both sides, uh, you can draw and cut out one arm and then turn it over and trace it so that it's exactly the same size and same shape. Or you can just make them a little bit different. So I have my torso and my head and my two arms. I'm gonna cut them out first. Ta-da. There's one arm, but I need two arms. Two, okay. I like to test to make sure that I am creating the kind of puppet that I want before I get too far. So let's see, if I overlap the top of the arms with the shoulders, you can see it looks pretty good. I wanna keep going. Now I'm gonna cut two legs. I'm gonna use my torso so I try and get the right size legs. And I'm gonna draw my feet pretty big so I can put another hole in the toes. One foot. One leg, one foot. <laughs> another foot, another leg. I generally put my feet behind my torso, but you can put it in front, doesn't matter. That looks pretty good too. Now we have all the parts for our puppet. So we need to make sure that they all get attached. 
a hole for each shoulder and also a hole in the arms. And then we're gonna put two holes at the waist or your hips so we can connect the legs. Now, I'm at home and I don't have a hole punch. So I looked around my house and I realized that I did have some tools and I had a screw. If you're using something else, make sure that you're being safe and not getting something that's too sharp or too pointy or use, make sure that an adult is helping you. I'm going to very carefully make some holes. I'm watching my fingers so I don't get poked on the other side. Two holes. I'm gonna match up where I think the arm should go. Then I'm gonna try and make the hole for the arm so that it matches. Now I have a hole and a hole. I'm gonna do that again on the other side. Now I want to attach the legs. Remember when we were poking holes, try not to get that hole too close to the edge of your cardboard, otherwise it might rip. So now we have our body parts and we have holes in all the joints. So we have to connect those body parts together in order to have a person. It's sort of up to you what kind of materials you use. You can use pipe cleaners, craft wire. I like string, it's pretty easy to use, but you have to do some tying of knots. You can use those twist ties that come from a loaf of bread or maybe a paper clip. So it depends on what you have at home. But something that's gonna be flexible enough that you can twist it around and allow for movement. Another popular thing to use is brass fastener. So if you have a brass fastener in your house, you can use that too. So I have my scissors, cut a piece of string, and pull the string through each hole. So now I have the arm connected to the body, but I have to tie my knots. You're gonna tie one knot in the front and one knot in the back. Make it tight. I have all this extra string. You can cut it off. You might notice that if it's depending on your, your type of string or yarn that is starting to fray, a fun trick, a good tip to know is that if you have nail polish in the house, you can put some clear nail polish or a top coat kind of nail polish on and that will make sure that the, the string stops fraying. I'm gonna do this for all of the different joints. It took a while and it's not perfect, but I now have my body parts all connected. Now the next part is to make sure that we can add more strings and make it a marionette puppet. So the next places we're gonna put holes are on the hands, on the top of the head if you want, that's a little bit more optional, and on the feet, okay? We're gonna make our puppet dance. I have successfully made holes in the feet and the hands, right? Now we have to add some string. Now this string needs to be much longer because that's the string that we're gonna be able to hold onto to move our puppet. Let's see how long our string needs to be. Maybe we need to experiment and try it a few different times to see what kind of length we like. Hello everyone, hi. <laughs> it's a great experiment to see what kind of knots work. Do you think the strings for the legs need to be shorter or longer than the ones for the arms? Kicking my leg. I decided to add one to the head so that I could hold it a little bit more easily and then make him wave or make her wave, whoever your puppet is. It's definitely something that you can continue to experiment with. And the fun part, at least for me, is decorating your puppet to make sure it is just like you or maybe like your best friend that you really miss or someone that you love, like a family member. You can use markers, you can paint, you can add different types of paper. I have some old wrapping paper that I might cut up and add. Remember we started with Little B? Still a work in progress, but you can see I added some gift wrap paper, part of that bear, because I like bears. And maybe I wanna decorate the face so it looks a little bit more like me, add some hair, and then add extra strings so that I can move it a little bit more easily. Once you have your puppet, and especially when the puppet looks like you or someone that you know, you can write a play and perform it for yourself or for, for someone at home with you. You can think about how our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions are all connected. And I hope you enjoy making your own puppet look just like you. So remember dreamers, Steamwork makes the dream work, and we're all in this together. Bye-bye, stay safe.